Hello everybody, this is Antal, director at Tela Marine, and today we're gonna go diving one of the most unique and spectacular reefs of the Mesoamerican reef system, right off the north coast of Honduras in Tela Bay. But before we go into the water to take pictures and video, how about if I let you know why we think these reefs are so special and why we believe they may hold some of the keys to saving the Mesoamerican reef. Let's go. Before any talk about the amazing reefs of Tela, it is important to consider that Tela is one of the least likely places to find healthy coral reefs in the Mesoamerican region. Our story begins in the year 1912, when a large American conglomerate called the Standard Fruit Company stroke a deal with the Honduran government to plant and export banana via a long-term concession of extensive areas of land along the north coast of Honduras. The subsequent 108 years would see the rise and fall of a powerful American conglomerate and the transition from banana to palm tree plantations as a staple commodity for the local economy. For most of the last 108 years, commercial agriculture has had truly little, if any, regulations in Tela dumping huge amounts of fertilizers and pesticides in rivers and lagoons that eventually reached the ocean waters of the bay. In the early days, before shipping containers were standard, hundreds of men would work every day disembarking thousands of tons of fertilizers that would spill and sip into the bay waters. Wetlands were dried, cut and burned to make way for banana plantations, and this inevitably brought millions of tons of sediment into the bay. Today, Tela still loses hundreds of hectares of wetland to palm tree plantations every year, and although regulations are better than in the olden days, thousands of tons of fertilizers and sediment are still dumped into the bay waters. With banana plantations came the pressure to feed a growing population, and fishing came to the rescue. The last 108 years has seen how fisheries in Tela have transitioned from artisanal fishing 100 years ago to large-scale commercial fishing in the mid-1900s and finally to subsistence commercial fishing today. The mostly unregulated history of fisheries in Tela has had an immense impact in fish populations in the bay and its surrounding mangrove lagoons. A long history of booms and busts has kept Tela from reaching its potential as a fully developed urban commercial hub. But even so, today 120,000 people call this area home, and over 60,000 live in the main urban areas close to shore. Incredibly, after such a colorful history, Tela still does not have water treatment facilities and all the sewage water produced by its residents is dumped into the ocean as it has been done for over 100 years. In addition to sewage water, fertilizers, and sediment from local rivers, the Bay of Tela is flanked by the largest river in Honduras. The Rio Ulua Basin spreads along some of the most fertile and intensively farmed lands of the country spewing over 100 million tons of sediment into the ocean every year. Such is the impact of this river that according to researchers, today the Rio Lua is the main contributor of sediment to the Mesoamerican reef. And finally, to add injury to insult, the Bay of Tela and its relatively shallow protected waters have consistently ranked among the areas with the highest and most prolonged thermal stress in the Mesoamerican Reef, according to NOAA's Coral Reef Watch data and local observations. In the last three to four years, it is not uncommon for the shallow reefs of Tela to peak at 34 degrees Celsius. As you may imagine, healthy coral reefs would be the last thing anybody would expect to find in the Bay of Tela. But that is exactly what we found here in 2009. Not only does Tela have plenty coral reefs, but it arguably possesses some of the healthiest coral reefs of the Mesoamerican area. Many have described the coral reefs in Tela as magnificent, unique or special, but it is not uncommon to take an experienced coral surveyor diving and after their first dive, hearing them say, that was weird. Weird indeed is the word that most coral scientists might use to describe this reef, considering all we know about coral reefs and how these reefs 
Challenge common knowledge. Reefs here can easily reach 70% healthy coral cover on average. This is four to five times the average coral cover in the rest of the Mesoamerican reef. It is in fact probably the highest healthy coral cover of all the Mesoamerican reef. The density of coral here is so uncommon that conducting accurate reef surveys here is a real challenge because most survey techniques were designed for a typical reef where coral colonies are easily distinguishable one from the other. In Tela, reefs don't grow in patches as usual. The reef is better described here as a carpet of coral where sometimes it is next to impossible to know where one colony begins and the other one ends. There are also massive colonies of coral, like this Orbicella fabulata, that registers a height of 13 feet and a circumference of 58 feet. Coral colonies this size can be estimated to be as old as 300 years, meaning they have survived through several human and natural phenomena in their lives. The reasons for this unusual coral cover are not fully understood, but there is a lot of interest in finding out among those who have seen this incredible misbehaving reef. One of the most obvious features that could be a contributor to this exceptional coral cover is the abundance of Diadema antillarum. This tenacious keystone grazer can keep up to one square meter free of algae. And before 1983, they used to be one of the most common animals in the Mesoamerican reef. But about 37 years ago, an unknown pathogen ravaged the Western Atlantic and in some areas killed up to 99% of all long spiny sea urchin in what has sometimes been described as the largest mass mortality event of any marine species ever recorded in history. Incredibly, Tela still boasts a healthy density of about 1.5 diadema antillarum per square meter. Considering that today the average density of diadema in the Mesoamerican reef is one per every 100 square meters, and that studies have shown that successful spawning is very unlikely if diadema are not within a couple of meters from one another, it is safe to assume that diadema and tela are not only keeping the reef clean of algae, but also probably seeding the surrounding areas. As time progresses and these reefs are studied more closely, interesting new features have been observed. Although these features are purely observational and have not yet been held to the rigorous test of the scientific method, it is clear that these corals are somehow resilient to many of the usual deadly insults that affect typical coral reefs in the area. The nutrient-rich water of the bay has awakened theories of resilience varying from coral dependence on heterotrophic predation to the UV blocking effects of the nutrient-rich turbid water. Marine scientists are working on several theories today, and hopefully, sooner than later, we might be able to understand why these corals seem to be unusually resilient to bleaching and other coral stressors. In addition to its incredible coral cover, the abundance of diadema, and its resilience, the shallow reefs in Tela hold another secret. They are home to the highest coral cover of Acropora palmata in the Mesoamerican reef. This coral species, commonly known as elkhorn coral, used to dominate the shallow waters of the Caribbean. But beginning in the early 1980s, elkhorn populations started to decline steadily. And today we have lost 97% of this coral in the Mesoamerican reef. Acropora palmata is now listed as a critically endangered species, and considering its precipitous decline is attributed to bacteria common in sewage water, it is difficult to make peace with the idea that some of the largest and more numerous thickets of elkhorn coral in the Caribbean are located along the beaches of the Bay of Tela. Here, we have a reef that has beat all the odds. A reef with secrets that could help us understand the infinite variables that contribute to the speedy decline of coral reef ecosystems around the world. A reef that refuses to surrender to climate change and human stressors. A reef that when all other reefs might have surrendered could very well be the last reef standing. Hopefully beating all the odds into the future and ensuring the seeds of the reefs of tomorrow. Now it's time to go diving and hopefully I'll get to see you soon here in Tela, Honduras.